In this video we're going to take a look at part 7 of the Cheat Engine built-in tutorial which looks at code injection. We'll follow the same format as the last two videos, so we'll do the built-in tutorial and in the next video we'll apply the techniques we learnt to a real game. So let's start by checking the challenge description. It tells us that code injection is a technique where you inject a piece of code into the target process and then reroute the execution of the code to go through your own written code. In this tutorial, we'll have a health value and a button that will decrease the health by one each time we click it. Your task is to use code injection to make the button increase your health by two each time it's clicked. It tells us to start off by finding the address, so let's do that to begin with. We need to make sure we're connected to the tutorial process. And we want to search for this initial value, which you can see here, the health is currently 100, so we'll search for 100. We've got 73 results, so let's click hit me, and then let's search for this new value of 99. And there we go, we found the health value, so let me go and update this to health, and we'll also change the color. So although it told us to right click and select find out what writes to this address, in this case, let's just check the access to this address first of all which is F5, and it'll attach the debugger. And whenever we click hit me, we're going to see some instructions here. So all of these instructions executed whenever we click hit me. So what would be decreasing the health in this instance? You don't need to be an expert in assembly to identify the correct instruction here. We have some move operations. We've got a compare and we have a subtract. And we can see that the value which has been subtracted is zero one. So this is the source on the right and then this is the destination. So it's subtracting 0, 1 from the address pointer to, you can see we've got a pointer, by the RSI register plus this offset. So our health is decrementing by 1 each time we click hit me, and we can see we've got a subtract instruction which is subtracting 1. So that's a good hint that that's the instruction that we're looking for. We could also, of course, have done the show what writes to this address. So if we do that and click hit me again, this time there is only one instruction and that's the instruction that we're looking for. So next the tutorial tells us to open the auto assembler window from within the disassembler. We'll do that in a second, but first of all, let's open up the disassembler. Here we've got our assembly instructions. So this is the right operation which is occurring. Remember it's decrementing one from this address. And there are a couple of ways that you could solve this challenge. For now, what we could just do is just modify this instruction. So if you were to double click on this, there's a couple of ways we could do it. We could say that we want to change this so it's actually decrementing, you could say minus two, so that would actually, minus minus two is actually adding two. You could also change the operation, so change it from subtract to add. And if we do that, click OK and then click hit me, you see that the next button comes up and our health has actually gone up in doing this. So what's the problem with this approach? In this case, nothing. There's nothing wrong with us doing that. That's a way to solve this challenge. But let's think of a more complicated example where rather than just changing this to add or changing the value which it's subtracting or adding, we might want to actually insert multiple instructions. So say I wanted to insert, I wanted to modify this instruction. I want to insert another one right after it. Well, that's not gonna work because coming right after it is another instruction already in the game. So we simply don't have space to inject two instructions here. We can only add or modify as much as is allowed based on the amount of bytes that we already have in the code. So if we want to inject more code, we basically need to create new memory to do that. And that's where we're going to use this auto assemble function. So let me resize this a little bit. So we can use control and A. We can also, I believe, go to tools and then auto assemble. Both are fine. Let's go, let me make sure I've got that selected, the correct address. And, oh, I also, I'm going to change this back to subtract. And let's then do control and A. This little window pops up and then we can use a template here. So you can see we've got quite a few different templates and we'll be looking at some of these in more detail as the series goes on. For now, let's take a look at the code injection. So it asks us what address we want to jump to. That is, we can go and verify it. Well, I can't quite see it now, but that is the correct address that we had selected, so we'll click OK. And then we get this template code appearing. So what is the code doing? Well, to begin with, it allocates us some new memory. So you can see it's allocated as two gig of memory, and it's got some labels here. So these labels are pointing basically to these functions. So you have original code, you have exit, and you have return here. 
and whenever we have like jump return here it's basically going to jump past this code down to the bottom we also have our allocated memory so you see we have read write and execute access and this is where we should place our code so we can basically write some new code in here in a memory that's been assigned to us and we don't actually have to do that we could just modify the original code so I could still go here and change that to add and then execute this code but what if this instruction is used again elsewhere in the program maybe we don't want to actually change that to add maybe that will cause some other problems and later we'll see how we can write more complex scripts where we basically have some conditions here to say if the value somewhere or other in memory is this then we want to perform this new action otherwise we want to jump to the original code so for example let's say we want our player to have infinite health well we don't want the enemy's players to have infinite health so we might need to set up some condition here to basically say if the player being referred to is us then we want infinite health otherwise we want the original code to execute so that the enemies aren't invincible so let's look at a couple of ways we could solve this first of all we could take a copy of this instruction and then we could just say we want to add 4 and then just let the original code run so it will add 4 and then the original code will decrement 2 and that means we're adding 2 health overall that's one possibility we could also just add 2 and then we could go and comment out this code but bearing in mind that might cause some issues elsewhere if the same address is used for some other code if it's reused so that's one option we could also say we want to add to and then we just want to jump to exit and then that's going to skip the original code so that won't execute at all so they're all perfectly viable in this case let's try and do this add four and then go to execute this code can be injected are you sure yes it was successful go to it yes so now if we click hit me you'll see that our health is going up rather than down and we can see in this case then that our instruction has been inserted here so we can see that it's add in 4 and then right below it is the original instruction which subtracts 2 now I'm not 100% sure can I do control and Z I don't think there's I closed down the code injection window there so I can't actually go back and modify that code I don't believe let me try and do control and A template no can I view the last one I think closing the window there wasn't a good move Instead, let's try and knock out that instruction. So I'm going to replace what we just added with code that does nothing. And then it's still going to go down whenever we... Let's try and subtract. Yeah, there we go. So now we do hit me. And it's got its original functionality. So we'll do Control and A again to bring up this auto assemble. And let's just have a look at the code injection again. It'll come up with a different address because remember we did inject that memory. And we just want to make sure that the original code is the same here. So we're dealing with the same instruction. That's all fine. If we were to now try and assign this to current cheat table, we get an error saying there needs to be an enable and disable section if you want to use it as a table entry. So what we can do is go and insert this cheat table framework code. And you can see that actually added the enable and the disable. However, there's a slight problem. Let's go and do this again with a slightly different... Let me move this out of the way again. Let me go and do Control and A. We'll move this one over here and now I've lost the other one that's right here okay so this time we're going to do it the other way around instead of going to code injection and then cheat table framework code we're going to do cheat table framework code it's insert this enable and disable just like we have here and then we're going to do code injection do everything else the same and notice that this is actually different so in this case where we did code injection and then the cheat table template it's not actually inserted this deallocation where it's deallocating our new memory and it's not got this byte declaration as well declare bytes or define bytes which is basically the address this is telling it what to execute so you can either have the hard coded address or you can have the sequence of bytes which will basically translate to our instruction to our opcode and our operands so that's just something worth bearing in mind. In this example then, let's close down this one and we can add this now as a cheat table to our cheat table. So we can say, let's do it differently this time. Let's change this to add. So we are modifying the original code, we're adding to. Again, execute will only work once. So what we wanna do is go file, assign to current cheat table, and then let's close that down. And let's have a look. We've got this auto assemble script. Okay, so for now, if we do hit me, 
It's still decrementing our health, but if we go and enable this auto assemble script and click hit me, it's now incrementing our health. So it means we can toggle this. We can now toggle it again and our health is decrementing. We can toggle it and it's incrementing. Okay, hopefully that all made sense. One other thing I want to mention is array of bytes injection. So let me disable this. Let's right click the health and say what writes this address. Click hit me again. We get our instruction and we can go into the disassembler. And again, I'm gonna do control and A. This time I'm gonna to go to template and we have code injection, which we've been using previously and AOB injection. I'm gonna click on that one, click okay. And then we can give it a name, just click okay again. So what's the difference here? Well, the code injection, oh, it looks like it's freezing up on me. The code injection, we basically use a hard coded address. So you can see actually the address of this instruction. Since we injected our memory, the address is different, but it was actually showing tutorial exe plus and then the offset. And that's all fine, but what happens when the game developers update the game, they add some new code, they modify some code, that hard-coded address of this instruction is not going to be the same for each version of the game that's released. But what will be the same is the actual instruction, or what hopefully will be the same. What is more likely to be the same is that this instruction still exists somewhere in the program unless they've removed it during the update or made some other changes. And that's basically this, these bytes. So rather than using a hard-coded address, we can use the bytes, and that basically creates a signature where we can scan for this in the game and it means that any updates that come through, as long as this exact instruction still exists, we'll be able to find it and it won't break whatever code injection template that we've put together. That being said, code injection is faster to load than the AOB injection. So we might prefer to do that, but AOB is essentially gonna be more reliable across game versions. But we'll look at all this stuff in more detail as we go. I don't wanna overcomplicate things too much. In the next video, let's try and apply some of this code injection that we've learned to a real game and see what we can do with it. And just before we finish, I did skip quite a lot of this text, so let's just make sure we've covered everything. It tells us that the alloc, which was at the beginning of our code injection script, will allocate a block of memory for your code cave. It does also tell us that pre-Windows 2000 systems, people had to find these code caves in memory, so regions of memory that were unused by the game, but that's a thing of the past. and also notice the new mem and original code. So we should put our code in the new mem generally. And it gives us some examples. And notice it's recommended to delete the line that decreases your health from the original code section, else you will have the health. So it's basically telling us we can delete that, we can comment it out, we can jump past it, or we can increment by, as we did in the first example, by four, and then just let it decrement by two. In some games, the original code can exist out of multiple instructions, and sometimes, but not always, it might happen that a code at another place jumps into your code instruction and then causes unknown behavior. If that happens, you should usually look at the instruction to see the jumps and fix it, or perhaps even choose a different address to do the code injection from, as long as you're able to figure out the address to change from inside your injected code. Okay, and that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks. Bye.